Listen, lads, a very good morning to you. How are you this morning, boys? Thanks for joining us. We're good, good, Ali. How are you? You good? good? Listen, we're in top form. I'm not messing about here, Tom. Look, who would win an arm wrestle between the two of you? Oh, me, of course. Eh? Oh, I don't yeah. know about that. 100%. 100%. I don't, I don't think you've got... I beat my everything anyway, so... <laughs> Just to give our listeners a little bit of an idea of what's going on here. So, look, Tom is a two-times world's strongest man. Luke, a former European strongest man. If you can imagine the biggest bouncers you've ever seen <laughs> at a nightclub door when you arrive, that's what's just happened in, in our studio. These two guys are absolute giants. Boys, thanks very much for joining us. And the first thing I want to ask you as well is... How did you get into this, and when did you start to really, really aim for something like becoming the world's strongest man, brothers? Yeah, I mean, obviously Luke being 10 years older than me, he got right. me into it, 16 years old, went into the gym. I went just to get, you know, abs and press the ladies, and that was it. I didn't think anything <laughs> would involve into strongman. I think I did it for about a year, went to watch Luke at a competition, and thought, you know, this is cool, having your brother lifting cars, lifting logs, lifting stones, lifting things that you see these guys on TV lift. So, yeah, he took me to a strongman gym, and by the time I was 18 years old, I was competing at Scotland and Straw's Man against the best. You know, I was competing against Eddie Hall at 19, 20 years old, and then that's when I thought, 19 years old, I want to be the world's strongest man. So I quit my job at 21, and the rest is history, kind of just... Tell us, boys, tell us about the training, for example. You, you, you touched on it there. I mean, it's, it's not like, for example, it's not like your normal weightlifter. The, the, the guys that pump iron and all that stuff will, will specifically do training for pumping iron. But you have to do a, a different types of disciplines. So tell us a little bit about the training for it and the prep for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, lifting cars and lifting stones, you can't just go to the gym and do it. But, yeah. I mean, yeah, we get, we've got a big warehouse at home that we have our strongman stuff into it and... We do about a four-hour session, five-hour session of that, and there's a lot of technique stuff because, you know, if, if you lift a stone wrong, you're going to pop yes, your bicep yes. and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it takes a lot of kind of time. It's a marathon, not a sprint in this sport, and you know, mm. it took me like five, six years to get good at it. And, yeah, I think it's the same with Luke, you know, mm. five, six years. I mean, Luke's one of the best log pressers in the world, but, yeah, you have to dial the technique in 100% instead of, you know, can't go to, it's not like the gym and you can deadlift talk, and squat and stuff. Talk to us about that, talk, talk to us about that, Luke, log pressing. So just just explain what exactly it is that you're doing. Yeah, it kind of, it's, it's very similar to how it sounds. So basically you're, you're pressing a log above your head. So it's a cylinder-shaped object. It can either be a bit of metal, a metal cylinder, or a, right. literally a log press. What sort of weight would that be? Um, so the most I've lifted is 228 kilos above my head. Wow. Um, so That's like Big Al and Ali at the same time <laughs> in one hand each. I know what you mean. That's No, but that's like... That's, that's an incredible <clears throat> amount of weight, that yeah. isn't it? And the oh. stress and strain, you look, you guys are huge guys, and obviously you're going to have to be, but the stress and strain you put through your bodies, you, I'm sure you feel it. You feel the aches and strains from doing what you do. Yeah, of course, yeah. Every morning, you know, when you wake up, you have yeah. that aches and pains and yeah. the creaks. and um, But, you know, that's why our recovery has to be so much on point as well. So same as any any sports person, you know, you, your recovery has to be on point. If not, then you're going to just now, crumble. I, I would imagine your diet is very different to, to, to most people, certainly different to to, uh, to me and Ali. Tell us what, what a normal day for you boys and the amount of calories that you have to you have to get in. Yeah, so I think, you know, leading up to Worlds, I'm on about 10,000 calories. 10,000 calories? That's quite a lot, isn't it? And I mean, uh, it wow. starts with one of my favourites. It's like a pancake blowout. So I can eat as many pancakes as I want with as many sweets, with as many chocolate, with as much ice cream <laughs> as I want for breakfast. So it's a good start to the day. Is that the, is that the title for it? A pancake blowout? That's yes. it, a pancake blowout. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> and then and like, lunch, Luke? Yeah, um, so again, it's this is a more extreme end of the diet. So right. for, for Tom and I, we normally consume probably over a kilo of meat a day. Um, and then it could be like 10 eggs for breakfast. So lunch would be 350 grams of mince. Yeah. And then you either have pasta or potatoes or rice with that, accompanied with some veg. Then if we go to a competition, that's when we're looking to get in the most calories. So it's like a fast food type of meal. So we'd maybe have a, a double patty burger with fries, um, I'm partial to a strawberry tart, so uh, and, and, and I enjoy a little strawberry tart now and again. What about what about? But, but also, the the day, like, there is Ellie, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I'm thinking energy drinks, bananas, stuff like that. You know, the boys here. But but uh, what about? I'm sure people now. Listen, you guys, you you look, you're huge and you're, you're 
unbelievably well well developed. Mm. What about all that stuff that you're having to consume? Are, are there concerns about where you end up long term with all this in oh, terms yeah. of your health? There must be. Yeah, for sure. Tom and I we're, we're very on point. We're very fortunate we work with a company that takes our blood. So being as big as we are, you know, it puts more pressure on our heart. You've got to watch for the the kind of cholesterol levels yeah, as well. Okay. So we get that tested probably once a month. Wow. Um, so then there's there's stuff that then, so say if your cholesterol level is high, you need to eat a little bit healthier, drop out some of the, the fattier foods and stuff. Yeah. But again, because it's so extreme for that one week when we're competing at World's Strongest Man, for example, we eat pretty horrendous for that one week, super high calories. Yes. And then when we come back, it's very clean. So it's meat, potatoes and veg, eggs. Are there any, is there anything, lads, that are off the menu in terms of food and drink that you can't touch? Try not to... Uh, alcohol and stuff, you know, we try not yeah. to no. tipple in, uh, in that too much. Um, usually, I, usually I stay away from, like, fish and that kind of food if I'm abroad, but mm. nothing nothing really for food-wise, is it? Not too mm. much. Again, it's, it's just been sensible as well. When you eat a lot of dairy stuff as well, you can become mm. a little bit bloated, a little bit, you know, a lot of cheese, a lot of cream and stuff like that. It's yep. not as beneficial. And, and not an insufficient, not an insignificant, sorry, bill you've got at the end of the week for all this grub. Yeah, it's pretty expensive. Yeah. I mean, what, what's, a, what's a weekly shop for you boys? How much that would cost? Um, it's, it's a couple of hundred, probably. I'll well, tell you what. I'm in some way. Yeah, I think. <laughs> You haven't been doing it, Tom, lately. Uh, Obviously, Luke's been doing the shopping, I think, no. over the last few I, weeks. I just look at the bills. I just see the accounts every yeah. month. I can imagine. I'll tell you what, I want to send me Viv to where you two are shopping if you're getting that for Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, boys, I obviously want to mention as well that there's a great book coming out, Becoming the World's Strongest Brothers. Give us an indication. Where did the idea come from that and what we're looking forward to reading? Yeah, so it's it's just our story basically, Ali. It's um, you know, Tom and I grew up in the Highlands in Invergordon. Um, Tom Lovely. was diagnosed with autism when he was young as well. So, you know, that story, that inspiration of becoming, you know, having adversity and working through it. I think it's it's very, um, you know, everyone can kind of relate to that. You know, we all have some form of adversity in our lives. We yeah. lost Mum back in two thousand sixteen, and then once Mum passed away, that's when we used her life as an inspiration to try and achieve Great. something and you know after that tom became two times world's strongest man i became europe's strongest man um, and we decided why not kind of put the story out there and see if it can maybe inspire others and um it's so nice now to see families come in brilliant um and you know kids with autism and stuff look up to Lovely. tom and, and he's he's uh, yeah he's inspiring i hope we both are but certainly tom inspiring so many kids with with autism that are on the spectrum fantastic and i know you've got your own your own clothing line, you've got commercial, you've got your own gym, mm. obviously, and so quite rightly you're looking at looking to the future and making sure all this hard work is for, for absolutely the right reasons. That's great. You've got a strength academy, is that correct? Yeah, online strength academy. An online strength yeah, academy, yeah, which, which is... I'm sure... And, I'm, and again, people nowadays are loving going to the gym. It's become yeah. very much something, Ali, hasn't it, that, that a lot of the young uns want yeah. to get involved in, mm. and older people, of course, but, but, but strength and conditioning is now becoming part of everybody's everyday thing, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. It's, and it's so important as well. It allows us to take accountability for ourselves as well. So if you want to do something to improve yourself, you can, you know, so train hard, eat well, cold water swims as well. We do a lot of that in the mornings, you know, look after our mental health side of things. So that, that kind of encompasses everything that we try and do in the, yeah. the Strength Academy is show people if you want to become two times world's strongest man, Europe's strongest man, or if you want to lose weight or if you just want to get better mentally, there's options there for you Brilliant. to try and look just, into. Ali, just before yes. the guys before the guys go, look, I've got I've been given a tray here, <laughs> right? I've, I've been given a tray. Look, and I'm done. If you can see this, pal, can I'm holding it up in front of the the monitor that you can oh, see? So I'm going to pass this to Tom, <laughs> and Tom is going to snap this in half, probably Come like on, he would do me. Um, so <laughs> here we go. Tom's got this tray in his yeah, hand. Yeah. Oh, you're so strong, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, there you go. There you go. Tom, you, what you don't realise, mate, you've got a bill at the end of that. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you can use it for kindling. You've just Kitchen. ruined about four quid's worth of tray there, Tom. <laughs> but uh, listen, guys, brilliant, brilliant. That. brilliant stuff. And we wish you the very best of luck. And, and, and I mean it, it's a, it's a sport that you guys have got into. And it's a discipline. It's 
And I'm sure that uh, you will have inspired plenty of people also out there listening today to get in there and look after themselves. Because at the end of the day, I'm sure every day you wake up, you guys, you train, you feel great about what you do. Yeah, 100%. Here, here. Yeah. Absolutely. Tom, look, I'm delighted to have you on the show. I'm got to, like, I'm not there in the studio, boys. I was looking forward to meeting you, obviously. Um, but I'm over in Paris for, for the game tonight, which isn't too much of a blow. But we'll definitely catch up, hopefully, in the future, mate. And keep up the good work, lads. Awesome. Cheers, Alex. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thank on, you, guys. guys. Talk Sport Breakfast. Waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6 a.m. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.